exactly a month ago today, we shot a market crash video. And at the time, I knew the market was not in good shape, but the last 30 days, based on a lot of research and a lot of data that we've looked at, which I'm gonna share with you, as bad as I thought it was, it's a lot worse. Now, you get to do whatever you wanna do with this data. Dave Ramsey calls it fear porn, saying there's a lot of people getting scared and they're excited about the market. So nothing's gonna to happen to the market. It's gonna be all right because the inventory's not taking a hit. I'll give you data. You read the data, free PDF, choose whatever you want, to, you want to do with it, then make a decision for yourself. Because when you look at $3 trillion of wealth being lost in retirement in the first six months, a trillion in crypto, and you know that domino effect, because the question becomes, is it too late? Can we do anything about it? When people stop making money and their wealth goes away, they have less disposable income. When you have less disposable income, there's less spending. When there's less spending, there's lower business profits. Lower business profits leads to layoffs, then it's unemployment, then it's foreclosures and bankruptcies, then divorce, crime, drugs, OD, alcohol, protests, riots, back at it again. Sounds scary, but that's data. And by the way, Elon Musk said recession is part of the economical cycle that is natural to go through it, but there's three Ps that he talks about. Number one is predict. Always stay multiple moves ahead. Number two, prepare. Get ready for what's ahead. And number three, persevere. Stand tall and find a way to make it through. And we're at the phase where you gotta be prepared and you gotta persevere and you gotta find a way to make it through. Okay, so a lot of this may sound scary, but I want you to put your logical hat on, set aside the emotional hat, just go through these trends, process it together, and then make a decision what you wanna do with yourself and your business moving forward. Having said that, these are the topics we're gonna to cover. Number one, mortgage industries, how refi data is affecting the industry, the interest rates, how investors and builders are backing out and kind of changing their strategy, active listings, real estate value, construction, layoffs. Freddie Mac, deputy chief economist, said something very interesting, foreclosures, consequences, and the similarities between now in 2008. So before we get started, let me give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video and that's BetterHelp. I'm a big believer of what they do because a lot of people are in a lot of pressure today and they don't know who to talk to. They don't know if they talk to their spouse, their dad, their parents, their friends. What BetterHelp does in a very discreet way, you're able to deal and speak with a therapist that you talk to one on one with the challenges you're going through. They got 20,000 plus options of therapists to go through and if you don't like it, you can switch to somebody else. You simply fill out a questionnaire and within 48 hours, they match you with a therapist that suits you. For me, and back in 2007, 2008, when I was going through market crash and I have no clue what's gonna be happening, especially 07, 08, 09, I start my own company. There was a guy who I was told was a therapist in Santa Monica, an hour and a half in traffic. I would drive from Granada Hills. I'd go to him, he would sit there and listen to what I was going through. You have no idea how helpful it was for me, the entrepreneur, having somebody to sit down with. So if you're feeling alone, you've got a lot of stress in your life, give these guys a shot. Go to betterhelp.com forward slash value team and you get 10% off your first month. One more time, go to betterhelp.com forward slash value team and you'll get 10% off your first month. So let's get right into it. First thing I wanna look at is mortgage refis and how investors and builders are changing their approach. Now, when you think about the real estate industry, you have loan officers, you have realtors, you have escrow, title, appraisal, all those guys, but I wanna focus on loan officers. What a loan officer does is when you're buying a house, say you're buying a million dollar house, you need to get a million dollar loan approved so the realtor can show you the homes, you go to a loan officer. The loan officer comes back and gets you the loan for a million dollars and he'll say 3.8%, 5.4%. The loan officer makes money in a couple different ways. One is new homeowners getting a loan from a loan officer or an existing homeowner who is wanting to refinance their house for lower interest rates. For example, you bought a million dollar house five years ago at 6%, I'm just making up the number. I call you, I'm the loan officer, I call you a year later and I say, hey, interest rates have dropped from 6% to 4.5%. I'd love to help you save some money on your payment. I can lower your payment from $6,000 a month to $5,000 a month. Oh my God, that's great, let's refinance. That's refinance, the loan officer makes roughly 2% on that loan. If the loan is at that time, say a million dollars, 2%, $20,000, He's at 50%, he makes 10 grand. That's the loan officer. Now watch what's been happening with applications in the refi market. Number one, mortgage application volume was 52.7% lower last week compared to the same period one year ago, according to Mortgage Bankers Association. Now that's mortgage application, which means I may be buying a house and I want a loan for a new mortgage of a house I'm buying. But watch refi. 
Applications for refis on existing mortgage dropped 75% from a year ago, according to the MBA's Refinance Mortgage Application Index. According to AEI Housing Center, which tracks mortgage applications by the number of rate locks, no cash refis have collapsed, you ready? By 93% from a year ago. That's 93%. Most of loan officers, 80% of their income was on refi the last few years, the refi business is gone. Which means if these guys were making 50 grand a month, now they're making roughly 10 grand a month. If they were making 20 grand a month, now they're making roughly $4,000 a month. That's a very big difference. So now, if you're somebody that's saying, Pat, I'm not in the real estate world, I'm not good with math, what does this really mean with interest rates? Let me just simplify it for you. If you bought a half a million dollar house, let's just say your loan is $500,000 and you bought it two years ago and you got a nice 3% rate, your payment would be roughly $2,108. Now, if you buy a house, which roughly today, the rate's around 6%, the same $500,000 loan at 6%, is $2,997. That's nearly $900 higher. Now, if you were to buy the same $500,000 loan at 9%, watch what happens here. The payment becomes $4,023. It doubles in payment from 3%. Same loan amount, same house, everything's the same. One was 3%, it was $2,100 a month. The other one is 9%, it's $4,000 a month. How many Americans can go from $2,100 a month to $4,000 a month, not many. That's interest rates. So now, some people in the real estate world, you may be watching the same Pat, give me a break. It's not gonna go to 9%. It's not gonna go to 12%. It's not gonna go to 15%. Okay, fair. Maybe you're right. But Musk said, prepare, and I'm advising you to be prepared so you can persevere. So let's say, what if it goes to 9%? I think it's gonna go to 10%. I think it may even go higher than 10%, but I think it's gonna touch 10%. Let's take a look at the history of interest rates. If you look at this chart from 1970 till today, today it shows around 5.7% interest rate. If you go back a couple years, you'll see 3%, 2.8%, you see how low it is right there. Now, if you go back 20 years ago, you'll see it was at 5.8%. Here's the crazy thing. If you go back around 2008, 2007, and go all the way back from 1970 till around 2007, 2008, rates were never below 5.7%. If you gradually move back, you'll see it go to 6%, 7%, 8%, 9%, 10%, 11%, 18.5% during Jimmy Carter era. So you saw this, I'm giving you history. I'm not selling you a loan, I'm not selling you to sell your house. I don't benefit from you doing anything with your house. I'm not in that business. I'm giving you stats. Here's a part you have to be uh, very careful with. Go to 81 when Jimmy Carter was president and it was hyperinflation. Everybody was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? CD rates were at 14 and percent. What did we do back then that caused rates to go this high versus today? What we did back then, was it as ugly as today? Was it a big pandemic back then? No. Today, printing money after printing money after printing money after keeping rates so low, after all these things happening, we have fed the economy with so much fake success that it's about to pay a price for it. Meaning, be prepared that it could go that high, but definitely be prepared that it could touch 10%. If, and if it does, my example of $500,000 at three, six, nine percent you gotta do the math at around 10%. Here's what this means. A $500,000 loan is probably gonna be a $250,000 loan five years from right now at 9%, which means value of property could drop 30, 40, 50% in certain areas. Not saying it's gonna happen, just be prepared that it could. Now, when it comes down to builders, a recent article from Bloomberg said the following data. Builders are slashing their prices on new homes at an unbelievable rate as the market cools and prices drop at the fastest pace, ready, since 2006. Austin, Texas, Nashville, new construction offering with price cuts has quadrupled from a year earlier. Phoenix tripled, Tampa region doubled. So now I want you to take a look at this chart and kind of explain to you why this matters so much when it comes down to builders. You're seeing this chart that says 1 million homes and at the top it says single family building backlog. Look at the difference with the blue, which is single family homes under construction, permitted, skyrocketing, that's inventory, and the orange is mortgage purchase demand. This is from US Census Bureau. So if, if, if we have more builders are building areas that is not bought by anybody, but mortgage is dropping, that's when inventory goes up. When inventory goes up, prices goes down. 
this is not a good sign to look at when it comes on to a value of homes staying stable. So the next thing to take a look at is active listings, which Dave Ramsey, who said, you know, this fear porn, all this stuff that he says, it's just not a big deal. Maybe a little bit, it's not gonna happen. Nothing over five years, which by the way, five years, he may be right that nothing's really gonna happen over five years, but we're talking today. Okay, we're talking today when, hey, I wanna buy a house right now. You may wanna wait another year till you buy a house. Just watch this data here and you make a decision for yourself. So this is from realtor.com showing active listings and you'll see the different colors represent different years, 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I want you to focus on 2022 all the way at the bottom, which is yellow. You'll see the active listings in January goes down. If it goes down, property value goes higher because there is less inventory for you to buy a house. For example, if I make an offer on a house here and I'm saying I wanna buy a house that's close to this uh, schooling because I wanna send my kids to this private school and my realtor says, there's only two houses in this market with a swimming pool, I don't have a lot of options. There's only two homes. If there was 50, I can negotiate and say, if you don't give it to me at this price, I'll go over there. But if it's only two, they're gonna get 50 offers because 50 people are fighting to get that one house, the seller's in charge. But if listing was 50, the buyer is in charge. Make sense? So look at the numbers. January to February, inventory goes down. This is good for sellers. February to March, pretty much unchanged, good for sellers. March to April, goes up a little bit better for buyers. Look at April to May, goes up. Look at May to June, goes up 18.7%. Now that's only two months. If this chart, the number to follow is this one, it's very important. If the active listing keeps going higher and higher and higher and builders have a bunch of place that's not occupied and that goes higher and higher and higher and the amount of mortgage applications goes lower and lower and lower, you don't need to be a genius to know. You have to drop the value of your house to sell it. It's just what's gonna happen. That's pure basic economy, supply and demand. This is why one of the most important data to look at is active listing that tells a story. So now real estate value, obviously in the last two years has gone up, not 10%, not 15%, not 20%. It's gone up 40.4%, some areas even more than 40.4%, but across the board, 40.4%, which is great. It's gone up, so people are making money. If you own a house, you build a lot of equity for yourself, but here's a challenge. If that's going up, what else has gone up? Construction's gone up, steel's gone up, materials gone up, energy's gone up, furniture's gone up, concrete's gone up, transportation's gone up, softwood lumber's gone up, price of freight has gone up 26%. Price of deep sea transportation freight is up 35%. So that's all good for the economy. But what happens now when inventory goes up and people are no longer buying at the pace that they were, What's gonna to happen to that 40.4%? Could it go back down to zero? If it goes back down 40%, it's what? It's what it was worth two years ago. So that's pretty realistic. But what if it goes down 60%? What else takes a hit? Steel, furniture, construction, all of those industries also take a hit. This is why it's all intertwined. But let me continue. Remember at the, er, at the beginning, when we talked about the fact that less disposable income leads to less spending, lower business profits, layoffs, unemployment, foreclosure, bankruptcies, divorce, crime, drugs, OD, alcohol, protests, riots. Okay, what does this lead to? Layoffs. There's layoffs everywhere. Compass, who they, I love Compass. I've done business with Compass for many, many years. They're great. Compass is letting go 10% of their sales. Compass is like the, you know, the high-end community realtors. If you work at Compass, it's very prestigious. They're letting go of 10%. Okay, Redfin announced they're laying off a ton of people. Chase, they're laying off just a thousand loan officers. And then you're seeing layoffs in all these other industries. But this is what Freddie Mac's deputy chief economist, Len Kiefer said last week, tweeted about this. He said, the US housing market is at the beginning stages of the most significant contraction in activity since 2006. By the way, Keep in mind, he, he doesn't get paid to do this. He's in the industry. So Freddie Mac knows something about this because they've been through this before, but they're also saying it's gonna be worse than 2006, which the last one I'm gonna share with you in this topic is foreclosures. Why foreclosures this early? Aren't foreclosures are supposed to happen six months from now, maybe next year? What, what would you say is the increase in percentage of foreclosures that we have in 2022 compared to last year, same time? What do you think the increase is? 20% more foreclosures, 40% more foreclosures, 60% more foreclosures. Wow, it's not gonna be 100%, right? You ready? We have 700% more foreclosures this year, same time than we did last year. Let me say that one more time. 
700 percent 23,204 foreclosures according to the database management company ATTOM data solutions that's 700 percent and it's just getting started okay these are the kind of things when you watch Big Short did you notice how cocky and arrogant everybody was Lehman's going out of business you're crazy Wamu going out and it never happened to Wamu is a 300 with AIG oh Merrill Lynch countrywide new century you're out of your mind that'll never happen and then everybody said holy shit it's happening so I'm not telling you it's going to happen all I'm telling you is history says if it repeats itself it's happening except it may be uglier because we printed way more money now this next data simulators of all 2008 versus today in 2008 okay the average worker say he made eighty thousand dollars a year whatever the number is the house prices at the time were eight times the average workers earnings so eight times 80 is what six hundred forty thousand dollars right you know what the number is today eight and a half times <laughs> so if in 2008 was eight times the average American is like, I can't afford to buy that big of a house. What are you talking about? It's eight times my income. It's crazy. Don't worry. It's eight and a half today, okay? Which means it's worse than what it was in 08. Which means what? It's got to come back down to around three or four times, which is the number, okay? It's either income's going to go up, which it ain't going to go up because there's layoffs, or it's the price of real estate's going to come down. So again, if you're watching fear porn like Dave Ramsey says, I'm giving you stats. Go chop these data up and say it's a bunch of crock or whatever, but give your argument. This is data telling you eight and a half times today versus what it was in 2008. So everything we talked about so far is real estate related, right? It's all tied to real estate. But what about crypto? All these people that became crypto millionaires, 80,000 wiped out. 80,000 crypto millionaires wiped out. What do you think they were buying? Nice homes, nice cars, nice watches, wiped out. Luxury watches, exotic Rolexes, Patek Philippe, they were taking a massive hit. Exotic cars taking a massive hit. All the tech stocks, NASDAQ is down. S&P is down 19% for the year. NASDAQ is down 28% for the year. It doesn't matter what you look at. Everything's taking a hit and everything's intertwined. So when you're looking at this data and you're asking yourself, how bad can it be? Michael Burry from The Big Short said the following. He said, as I said about 2008, it is like watching a plane crash. It hurts, it's not fun, and I'm not smiling. He also predicted that the next crash will dwarf the 2008 bust, which sparked a global financial crisis. Okay, so now that you've put your logical hat on and you got a lot of data, let's take that off, put the emotional hat on because we gotta now move. You gotta move, you gotta take some action. We'll give you the PDF here in a second, but stick around. There's a few things I want you to be thinking about. Number one, I said this, Back in 2009, 2010, when I had a lot of money in the bank cash and Denver posted an article on me saying, why are you living in a house and you're renting? I said, why, do I, why should I buy a house? Well, isn't that the American dream? I said, absolutely not. American dream is not home ownership. American dream is equity in businesses, entrepreneurship, side hustles, you know, being part of a startup, getting a piece of that company, that company goes sells, it goes public. That's the American dream. Then you make the money there and then you can buy a house if you choose to. The stress has been so much about the American dream, we have to shift. So a lot of people are looking at renting, and by the way, the plus minus for renting right now, is it, it's $850 more makes sense to rent than it is to buy. It's more expensive to buy today than it is to rent, to own to rent. So that's one part. Now again, if you're in real estate, you're not gonna like what I'm talking about, but I've been straight up with you since the day I started value team. So that's number one. Number two, side hustle. If you're making a million now, you're making 200, you gotta do something on the side. If you're making 200, you're making 50 now, you gotta do something on the side. If you're fully unemployed, you don't have a job, go learn new skill set and get a side hustle for yourself. There's never been more important than now to do that. Collaboration, find the right partnerships, save money today, get some cash. Things are going to be discounted even more. My prediction, I may be wrong, but I'm telling you what I'm doing, things are gonna be discounted even more, I believe, the next six, 12, 18 months. Don't try to time it perfectly. You just wanna be able to get it as low as possible, even though you're not gonna hit the... It, to get things you purchase at the rock bottom, very few people get that lucky. But even if you get it 20% of rock bottom or 10% above rock bottom, you're gonna be fine. Things are going to be discounted over the next six, 12, 18 months. Just an hour before I shot this video, I got a tweet from a guy that's a value tainer sending me pictures of a bunch of watches that are, you know, million for watch or Rafael Nadal. He's selling this next one here for hundred and, you know, $32,000. This next one is $68,000. He's sending me all this stuff with watches. All of these guys are gonna be discounted 50 more percent 
the next six to 12 months because people are not gonna have a choice. They need cash. And last but not least, as painful as it is, it's time to recreate yourself and start kind of doing your own research. Don't wait for me to do it. Go study for yourself. I did a Zoom with a bunch of CEOs yesterday. 83 of them were on. CEOs that are part of our consulting firm. You know what every one of them I taught? I went 15 minutes showing them how to research anything within their industry. Said, here's how you research. Go spend an entire day, not an hour, not 30 minutes winging it. Spend an entire day away from everybody. Research the history of your industry to learn what kind of right pivots to make. So now having said that, I owe you this PDF. If you want this PDF, click over here to get the entire thing, all the notes, all the links, everything we talked about. And if you never got a chance to watch the market crash video, somebody shared this video with you because you're in real estate, you may want to watch the market crash video as well. Click on that link here to watch that. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Future looks bright.